In this video, we're going to walk through calculating the internal rate of return for a couple different capital budgeting projects. In a previous video, we calculated the payback period for these two projects. So this is just kind of an ongoing part two of a multi-part video. The projects that we have here are projects A and B. Let's start with project A. We have an initial investment of $200,000. Note that's negative representing a cash outflow. Cash flow one, 120,000. Cash flow two, 90,000. Cash flow three, 50,000. Cash flow four, 40,000. And finally, cash flow five, 30,000. Now we're going to be calculating our internal rate of return. Internal rate of return is the average annualized expected rate of return over the five year time period on our $200,000 initial investment. And in reality, this is not something new. It's something we introduced back in our time value money chapter when we solved for the interest rate on an uneven cash flow stream. So we're going to get out our financial calculator. And the first thing we're going to do is look at that initial investment, 200,000. But remember, Anytime you're using your cash flow worksheet, you have to clear it out. So we want to start by pressing the CF. That gets us into the cash flow module. Now note from our previous problem, we've already got $75,000 in there. And so we want to be careful that we're not going through and repeating our cash flows. We want to clear that out. So once you press cash flow, second, clear work. Clear out that worksheet. Now you can see there's nothing in the worksheet. We can go ahead and get started. A little bit of light shadows on here. Hopefully everybody will still be able to see. So now that we've got it cleared out, we want to start with our CF0. Remember that CF0 is negative 200,000. So we go ahead and plug that in. 200,000. Make sure we hit that plus minus key. Make sure we set it as a negative. One of the mistakes I see people make a lot of times on internal rate of return calculations, they forget to make that initial cash flow negative. And if you don't make that negative, you're not going to get a solution. It's going to give you an error message because you've got to spend money in order to get some money back and have a rate of return. So make sure you make that initial cash flow a negative representing an outflow. Okay, once we've got that done, enter, down arrow. Now it's asking for CF1. Our CF1 is going to be the 120,000. So we go ahead and put that in, 120,000. Enter, down. And now it's asking us for the frequency. Now, our frequency, we've just got that cash flow one time. Note the default value is 1 on that frequency, so we don't have to do anything. We can just press the down arrow again, go to our next cash flow. Next cash flow is $90,000. So let's go ahead and put that in. 90000 Enter. Down. Next cash flow is 50000 Oops. Forgot about the frequency, but remember that frequency is just one. So down arrow gets us to our cash flow three. It's another thing to be careful about. You almost saw me do it right there. It's very easy to accidentally forget to press your down arrow twice, and next thing you know, you're putting in a frequency of 50,000. And your calculator is going to give you an error message there. If you run into a situation where you get something that looks like it doesn't make sense, Go back and scroll through your cash flow worksheet. Make sure you don't have something like 50000 in for your frequency. So now we're ready for cash flow 3. That's where we want to put the 50000 in. Enter, down, down, 40000 Enter, down, down. Our last cash flow is 30000 that in, enter, 
down our frequency is one everything's set up got all our cash flows in so now all we need to do is solve for the internal rate of return that's our IRR button so just hit compute IRR hit IRR and then compute and we get 20 set 26.72 percent so once you get your cash flows in press internal rate of return press the IRR button and then compute first time I did it backwards but notice it didn't mess anything up it just didn't give me the answer so what you've got to do is once you get your cash flows in press the internal rate of return that says okay now we're ready to solve and then you press that compute button so our first project has an internal rate of return of 26.72 percent now we want to go to project B project B so let me go ahead and just write that down before I move on. Twenty six point seven two percent. Now project B, we'll go ahead and do the same thing. Remember, we want to start out by clearing out our worksheet, cash flow second, clear work. Our initial cash flow is a negative four hundred thousand. We go through this one a lot quicker. Make it negative. Enter down forty thousand. Enter down down sixty thousand. Enter down down one hundred twenty thousand. Enter down down to forty thousand. Enter down down our last cash flow three hundred and forty thousand. Enter frequency of one. So now we're ready for our internal rate of return. Press the internal rate of return. Compute. And we get an internal rate of return of 19.74%. Now, we've calculated these. So, based entirely on internal rate of return, we'll come back and do the kind of overall later. But based entirely on internal rate of return, what should we do if they're independent? Independent projects means we can take project A and B or project A or project B or take neither one. In this case both projects have an internal rate of return, an expected rate of return greater than their required return so if they're independent we want to take both projects. So independent take both A and B they both have an internal rate of return that's greater than their required return or sometimes they would say greater than their hurdle rate. How about if they're mutually exclusive? If they're mutually exclusive, now we have to choose the best project. Best project is going to be the one with the highest internal rate of return. That's project A. Mutually exclusive, we can't take them both. So we want to make sure we choose the one that's the best. According to internal rate of return, project A is a better project. That should help you with internal rate of return calculations using the Texas Instruments BA2 Plus calculator.